Welcome to this three-part video series discussing the Operations Bridge Manager installation. In this part, part one, we will look at the architecture design overview. The following diagram provides an overview of an Operations Bridge Manager enterprise deployment. An OBM deployment consists of proprietary servers and components, data providers, and third-party servers such as database and web servers. This set of servers are responsible for running the application, facilitating system management, data handling, reporting, and alerting. They can be installed on a single host or several interconnected host systems. The OBM data processing server is a server responsible for aggregating data, running the business logic engine, and controlling the runtime service model, RTSM service, within OBM. Only one data processing server can be active at a time. If an additional DPS is installed, it acts as the backup server that can be used in case there is a failure with the active DPS. The DPS that is installed first is referred to as the primary data processing server. The OBM Gateway Server is the server that is responsible for running the OBM application, operating the administration area, producing reports, receiving data from the data collectors, and distributing this data to the relevant OBM components. For users to be able to access OBM, a web server must be running on the host system of the Gateway Server. Apache web server is bundled with the OBM installation and is automatically installed as part of the OBM installation process. Then there is the load balancer that OBM requires in distributed deployments that include at least two gateway servers. It is a server that performs load balancing that divides the workload among the gateway servers. As a result, the overall OBM performance and availability increases. The OBM load balancer provides two access points, the data collections virtual IP, which is the virtual host name for the data collectors to access the gateway server. It is used when configuring the data collectors for communication with OBM. And the user's virtual IP is the virtual host name for accessing the OBM console web interface that is located on the gateway server. It is the host name used by the OBM users. Operators and administrators access OBM through the user interface. The web interface to OBM, the OBM console, is accessed using a web browser on any system with network connectivity with the OBM servers, either in the intranet or on the internet. The database server is the database management system used by OBM. The database server can be local to an OBM data processing server or installed on a remote system. A local database server is automatically installed and configured by OBM, whereas a remote database server can be pre-configured or OBM can configure it. The OBM databases contain system-wide and management-related data. This data includes administrative settings and user-provided information events and event-related data, as well as configuration data, and configuration item, CI data. This data includes the CIs that model the computer system's infrastructure and the relationships between them. There is also the mail server, which is a server that sends alerts to the designated recipients. And then we have the data providers, such as the operations agent and site scope, or third-party tools such as SCOM or Nagios, that are applications integrated into OBM that send data for aggregation and analysis. The integration enables the flow of events from the applications to OBM. Deploying OBM in an enterprise network environment is a process that requires system architecture design, resource planning, and a well-planned deployment strategy. For more information regarding the OBM installation, the OBM online install guide can be referenced at docs.microfocus.com by selecting Operations Bridge Manager. In the next part, we will cover OBM deployment strategy and planning for an OBM installation.